Hi guys! In this video, we're gonna find the volume of solids of revolution rotated around vertical lines to the left of the y-axis. So let's take a look at this problem. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the area bounded by y is equal to x, that's gonna be the yellow line, and y is equal to x to the power of 2. And so if we take the area between these two curves and we rotate it around x is equal to negative 1, so this vertical line, and if we rotate it around this line, what kind of three-dimensional solid are we going to get? Well, we're going to get something like this. So our three-dimensional object is going to look something like this, and we want to find the volume of this object. So the volume of this solid, or V solid, is equal to the volume of the outside function. So V out minus the volume of the inner function, so V in. Now, if you look at the diagram, when we rotate the area around the curve, we're going to have some empty space inside. And so to get rid of that empty space, we need to find the volume of the outside function, which is y is equal to x to the power of 2. And we minus the volume of the inner function. And that's basically going to get rid of all of the empty space inside. All right. So if you remember from the volume formula, the formula to find the volume is simply the integral from A to B. In that case, it's just from 0 to 1. So from here to here, which is from 0 to 1. 0 to 1 of A of y dy. Where A of y is the area of the cross section. And I'm just going to choose a cross section right here. So that's our cross section, which is a circle. Now, how about the volume of the inner function? Well, it is also the same thing, which is the integral from 0 to 1, because from here to here is 0 to 1, of a of y dy. Where a of y is going to be the area of the cross section, which is a circle. So the next step is to find the area for the cross sections. So let's start with the pink one. We know that the area of a circular cross section is going to be pi times the radius to the power of 2. So how do we find the radius? Well, let me show you how to do that. So first things first, we know that we chose this to be our cross section. So the distance from the center until it touches our cross section, so that distance right there, is going to be y. So that distance is y. The distance from the y-axis until it touches our function, so this distance right here, is going to be x. And finally, since this is negative 1, we know that the distance from the y-axis until here, that distance is going to be 1. So if you look at the diagram, the radius is just x plus 1. That's it. So let's rewrite this. This is going to be equal to pi times x plus 1 to the power of 2. Now, there is one formula that you can use that will always give you the radius. So another way to find the radius is to use this formula, which is you take the right x. So take the right x. I'm just going to write x right here. And you minus the left x. So we're going to minus the left x, and the left x is basically this one. So that's going to be minus negative 1, and this formula always works. So take the right x minus the left x, so x minus negative 1 is going to be equal to x plus 1. So that's basically the same as our radius right there. Since we are integrating with respect to y, we have to rewrite our area formula in terms of y. So first things first, we know that the function is y is equal to x to the power of 2. So y is equal to x to the power of 2, which means that x is equal to y to the power of 1 half. So let's put this into x right here. So that's going to be y to the power of 1 half plus 1 to the power of 2. So we successfully found 
the area of our cross section and let's put it into our integral. Let's do the same thing for this area right here. So the area of a circle is also pi times the radius to the power of 2. So we chose this to be our cross section, and we know that the distance from the center until it touches our cross section, so this distance right there, is going to be y. And the distance from the y-axis until it touches our yellow function, so that distance is going to be x. And finally, the distance from here to here, so that distance is going to be 1. So the radius is just x plus 1. So let's rewrite this. The area is going to be equal to pi times x plus 1 to the power of 2. And since y is equal to x, then we can just rewrite this as pi times y plus 1 to the power of 2, because x is equal to y. So let's put this back into our integral. So since both integrals have the same boundaries, we can just mash them together into one integral, and that's going to make a lot of things easy for us. So this is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times y to the power of 1 half plus 1 to the power of 2 minus pi times y plus 1 to the power of 2 dy. So the next step is to factor out the pi's since they are just constants. So let's bring them outside of the integral and we're going to end up with pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of y to the power of 1 half plus 1 to the power of 2 minus y plus 1 to the power of 2 dy. Let's solve for this part right here. So y to the power of 1 half plus 1 to the power of 2 is the same thing as this multiplied by itself y to the power of 1 half times itself is going to be equal to y. y to the power of 1 half times 1 is going to be y to the power of 1 half. And it's the same thing over here. So plus y to the power of 1 half. And 1 times 1 is simply going to be 1. So we can rewrite this as y plus 2 times y to the power of 1 half plus 1. And let's put this back into our integral right there. Now, how about this part right here? Well, y plus 1 to the power of 2 is the same as y to the power of 2 plus 2y plus 1. So let's put this back into this part right here. Let's keep on going. So this is the same as pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of y plus 2 times y to the power of 1 half plus 1, minus y to the power of 2, minus 2y, minus 1, dy. So the first thing we see is that the 1 and the negative ones are going to cancel out. And we're going to have pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of y, plus 2 times y to the power of 1 half, minus y to the power of 2, minus 2y. And so y minus 2y is going to be negative y. So this is going to be the same as pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of negative y plus 2 times y to the power of 1 half minus y to the power of 2 dy. This is going to be equal to pi times the antiderivative of negative y, which is just negative 1 over 2 times y to the power of 2. Now the antiderivative of 2 times y to the power of 1 half. Now we're going to have y and we plus 1 over here. So that's going to be 3 over 2. We have to divide by that exponent. So we're going to end up with 2 times 2 over 3 times y to the power of 1 half. And if you multiply this, you're going to end up with 4 over 3 
times y to the power of 3 over 2. And minus the antiderivative of negative y to the power of 2 is 1 over 3 times y to the power of 3. And the boundary goes from 0 to 1, and we can just go ahead and close that bracket right there. So if you substitute these numbers into our formula, you're going to get i times negative 1 half plus 4 over 3 minus 1 over 3, closing the bracket. The next step is just to evaluate these fractions. 4 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is 3 over 3. And 3 over 3 is just 1, right? So we're going to get 1 over 2 plus 1. And we know that this is the same thing as pi times 1 over 2 positive. And the final answer is just pi over 2. So this number, let me circle it. So this number right here represents our volume of the solid of revolution.